What's going on guys? It's Alan from 12 Gauge 44. Uh, we normally do hunting and fishing type videos and stuff, but today we're going to be tapping some maple trees. Come along. So, like I said, we're going to be tapping some trees today. Uh, I kind of want to go over a little bit of differences between uh, buckets and lines. Um, first, you're going to find yourself a good maple tree. Uh, these is, uh, this right here is a good mature maple. It's in our front lawn. Uh, the roadside trees and ones that get a lot of sunlight produce more uh, sap and usually have a higher sugar content. Um, so this one's just a real good example. It's right in our front lawn. They're not all going to look like this, but this one's real dandy. Um, yeah, so with, with the buckets, you kind of want to go find a tree about the size of the bucket or bigger. Or even with a normal chap, you do. And then as the tree gets bigger, you can put more and more buckets on. This one you could probably put three, maybe four buckets on, but we're only gonna put two because it's just in the front lawn. I don't want to suck too much out of her. But um, we got one bucket on the other side. I'll show you that. These are the old style buckets. These are actually my great grandparents, uh, great grandpa buckets. He had quite the operation for syruping, and uh, these are actually his old buckets. And uh, here's here's an old tap that goes along with it. Um, these are real old school taps. Um, it takes a 3 8 inch drill to drill into the tree. And you come look at these. Some of these buckets are a little more beat up than other ones. Uh, they don't recommend using these buckets so much because uh, there's lead in the weld, so they don't want lead leaching into the sap. But um, you, you check out the drip. It's kind of cooling off, so it's not really running the greatest right now, but you can see how the tap goes into the tree and it drips right into your bucket. Yeah, so not, nowadays they use these uh, either stainless or aluminum buckets and then they uh, you can also do plastic buckets or bags and all those will work the work just as good. They actually would work better than these but at least for the front tree I like to put out my grandpa's buckets just for the looks but we, we do have better buckets that we'll be hanging out also. So we'll do a tap here. Okay, that's the one tree. I want to find a spot. You can see some of the old. You can check that out. Right there is an old tap from from before, from previous years. There should be a handful of them around. But um, we'll tap one right here. Okay. And it might not be flowing quite yet because it's it's pretty cold. But usually if it's warm enough above freezing it'll actually start flowing right right out of the tree and you tap her in nice and snug and then you hang your bucket just like that and we'll go we'll go tap some more trees and we'll be right back. Alright, so these, these are the newer style taps for buckets. Um, I think I got these at Trasher Supply or something. Uh, these are all stainless. Stainless is really good if you're going for a lot of production. It's easy to clean and doesn't rust and doesn't have all the side effect. I just threw an old one of my old lids on it. But uh, these are the these are the new buckets. They're real lightweight and they're supposed to be a lot better for you. I think this might be a shirt, uh, soft maple or a red maple, but uh, it's right in the front lawn, so we're just going to tap it anyway. You go in about, I don't know, an inch. I'm not good at guessing. But um, that's about as far as you want to go in. And you'll take your, your tap. Tap her in. Once you get that tapped in, uh, there's this little hook that just goes right in the hole. Your bucket, put that on. Get it lined up, and it's not the best, but it's on there. It'll it'll drip into the bucket. Yeah, my old the old school buckets I think work a little better, but there's different styles and stuff, so just find what you want. But um, you know it's. That's about it for the buckets. Uh, we'll throw a few more. We'll throw a few more of the old school ones on the trees, 
and I will just do a quick little overview on them. But yeah, that's you just tap your tree. On warm days, she'll run. On colder days, they'll freeze up. You want to tap in the spring, right when things start thawing out. Um, the sap flows up and down the tree on the warmer days, and that's when you get to collect your sap. And then you're going to want to boil that down pretty fast. You can either sell it to a maple producer, or you can just try and boil it yourself. I wouldn't recommend doing it on your stove because it's going to make a mess out of your kitchen, but I'd try it outside. It takes a long time. It takes quite a bit of sap to make a gallon of syrup, but it's definitely a cool experience, and I'd recommend it. So we'll put some more buckets up, and we'll be right back with you. See this one? I just I just drilled this guy, and it's already running for us. Um, I'll put this tap in real quick, and it should start coming right up the tap. So this is the older style tap, so it should start dripping in just a second. Uh, the, the main the advantage the buckets have is that you don't have to worry about your gravity. Um, you don't have to think the trees can be pretty well spaced apart. And uh, you don't have to worry about all the costs when it comes to tubing and stuff. Where you, you have to, Your initial cost would be your buckets and stuff, but they'll last you forever. But if you're looking to get quite a, quite a number, few number of taps, like over a couple hundred, I'd definitely look into line system. But if you're just looking for around, well, it depends how active you are. I'd run about 300 buckets, but that's quite a bit of work. But most people probably want to be like 150 or less buckets. And like I said, you're going to need quite a bit of sap to make a gallon. But if you're just making for your for your own family or just for fun, you could probably put out 10, 12 buckets and you'll, you'll have a pretty fun time doing that. Yeah, well, we'll keep plugging along. Right, guys we're down the sap lines right now this is where we tapped 1300 taps right now where uh, with all the line system uh, I'll give you a quick little tour of that and we'll see what she looks like okay this right here this is our pretty good sized collection tank uh, our main our wet lines run into this um, we got one main wet line running up through the entire woods it's pretty selective cut into maples right now and like I said there's this year we added there's 1300 taps total on this line at the moment around that number at least maybe a few more um, they all connect down to here into this tank and it's just barely run today uh, there's a little bit of debris floating around but the filter will catch all that and then while uh, we have it hooked up with some gator clamps Right out the spigot here, we got a little bit of an angle so that way it all flows down. I think this is a, yeah, right there, it says it's a 1,275 gallon tank. Uh, if, this, if this is full, full, it takes us two loads to haul it back to where we're boiling. Uh, this will connect to the pump and that'll pump it uphill to our parking spot right there where we can get in here and access. 
Um, but yeah, so as far as lines go, um, you got your wet line. This is, uh, I, I think it's like inch and a half, inch and a quarter line. Um, and this flows through the whole center of the woods. And then uh, we have our inch line hooking into that. And then uh, we, we just run all these ladder lines off of that. They go around this little loop-de-loop -loop into a, a saddle, which connects into this. And this flows up into the, the, the drop line, which is connected to the tree. And that's where your tap is at. So uh, these are these little uh, spud snub stout spouts. And it's got just a little tap to it. And you just you screw that. I think it's a 5 16th bit. You screw that into the tree, you tap her in, and it's the whole same system. Everything's all gravity fed right now. Uh, we set it up where we can do a vacuum eventually, but at the moment it's just gravity. And uh, yeah, it's all, all uphill from here. This is our lowest spot. And uh, we can give you a quick little walk through and we'll show you a little bit what we're working with here. You can see you, uh, you use these to tighten up the, the side ties to tighten up the line to hold it. And so I put a bunch of stakes and stuff through the woods, which we do. Not everywhere you've got a tree. Here's a stake. But um, when you do it on a tree like that, you just use a little bit of your tubing, and that will help when the tree grows. It doesn't grow right into the wire quite so fast. So we have some tube running around. This tree is not tapped. Well, it's got it's an anchor tree, so we're not going to tap this. This is doing enough for us. Um, we use these to we get these at tractor supply. We use these to tighten up the wire. Uh, I can't remember the gauge wire, but it's a pretty pretty thick wire, and then they're all tied tied on with little grape ties to the tube. Uh, we'll go to one of the end end lines here. So at the end of each of these ladder lines, there's these little hooks. You can see that. So that way you can easily just unclamp it and take this line down if you need to if you gotta cut a tree or whatnot. Or if a line come, tree comes down on it. Uh, here, these colored ones are the end one, end connectors, end tees. This is a, this is there's not this is plugged off right here on this end, or this end and this end are open. That way the sap will come down this end and go straight here, and you don't have to worry about all that. This is all just dead tubing just for just for grabbing onto the end. The tubing's real nice because with uh, you don't have quite as much debris like bugs and extra excess water and whatever getting in like the buckets are because they're. This is mostly sealed off for the most part. There's plugs in the ends of this, and then there's not a whole lot of room for air for things to get in. You still will have some debris and stuff floating around, but for the most part, everything is pretty sealed off. All right, um, another note is that uh, with the line system, you, the different types of lines, you kind of want to run differently along the terrain. Um, the, the terrain is what really affects it, whether it's like a hillside or a valley or up and down, up and down. It's, it all depends on your certain situation. Uh, this is kind of unique where we have a valley, a hillside, and some low spots. and it's, it's kind of a headache at first, but I think I figured it out pretty nicely. You want your... The wet, the wet line is that thick line. You can have that going either any way you want, but you need it growing uphill from your collection point. Then your main line, the one inch line, you want that running parallel with the hillside or valley side or the incline I should say. And then you want your ladder lines with the tubing that goes to the trees. You want that going perpendicular with the hill. So like, there's your hill, there's the wet line. Oh sorry, there's your main line. And this is the wet line it connects into. This will run alongside the hill where the, the lines that connect to the trees all go up and down the hill for better flow. And you can see farther up there, I have another main line running alongside the hill. And then that also will have 
lateral lines running up the hill to get the top part. Uh, there's about a, I'd say a 50, 60 yard gap in between the main lines to cover this hillside. There's only two running on this hill to gather up all these trees. It's kind of hard to pick up on the camera, but there's there's a lot of main lines running up and down. Sorry, a lot of lateral lines running up and down, gathering to these two main lines. When you're tapping trees, you gotta know what kind of tree you're tapping. There's other types of trees that run sap, like uh, birch, um, black walnut. There's, uh, this is probably a list you can find online, but they don't have the sugar content like sugar maples do. So that's why we tap them. We do tap the occasional soft maple or red maple when we see it, but we're not going to go out of our way to get one. Uh, a few trees in this area to compare with. Right here in the shade is a American beech. It's got real smooth bark. It's a little nut tree. Um, they're probably pretty easy to tell though, just how smooth and how kind of like an off gray they are. They usually have leaves on them too sometimes in the winter. Like that guy there's got some leaves, that's a beech. Um, this is a black cherry, it's got big cornflake, real dark bark. It's a real nice tree, but it's not what we're looking for. It's got a real thick gooey sap, you try and tap that. I don't think that's what you're looking for though. Uh, here, for example, here's a nice maple. As they mature, as they, mature they, they kind of crack like this, the bark kind of flakes off a little bit, but not too flaky. Um, yeah, if you, I look up some YouTube videos on identifying trees if you're just getting started. But uh, depending on your woods, you'll have other different types of trees. I know there's some ash in here, there's um, some hemlock, but if you're tapping pine trees, then you definitely don't know what you're doing. But uh, yeah, there's a ton of sugar maples in here. Alright guys, so that's basically it for tapping maple trees. You're welcome to tap other kinds of trees if you want to try that. Um, if you're just getting started, I'd recommend buckets. If you're looking to get a little more advanced, I'd say trying to run some lines, if, depending how your terrain is and your trees are. Uh, well, so we'll have you having some more coon hunting videos and other type of hunting videos coming up shortly. But uh, we've been a little busy with maple syrup right now, so I just thought I'd do a quick little video on that. And if you guys want a part two, I can do some collection and boiling. Um, so yeah, just enjoy the outdoors. I'll catch you guys on the next one. See ya.